So what's up, it's Nephibus. I really wanted to talk about uh, my struggles with communication and uh, being social. I figured like, you know, it's really something that I'm sure there's other people out there who can really like, you know, relate to it, have gone through it. Maybe hopefully it'll help somebody or maybe help somebody on the other side understand. Now, to really get into this, I got I got to go back. So, for me growing up, I, of course, wasn't popular at all. People didn't like me. I didn't get along. I was constantly in a situation where, you know, basically people were ready to fight me. And that, that was what it was like for me growing up. And I didn't just have problems with kids. I also had problems with adults. And adults would treat me horribly. And then, you know, I would also have some family members. And the main thing that I got made fun of for was my voice. You know, people would say I was gay. They would say I sound like a girl. Some people would call me a girl. Things like that. So I was always self-conscious about my voice. And I didn't like talking. I avoided talking. And I got made fun of. So... I associated communication with pain and, and with hurt and that's why that's why I avoided it as much as possible. And as a child I couldn't wait to become an adult. Not because of the reasons that the other kids did, but be because I thought that once I become an adult, it would stop. Because you know adults are more mature. But after becoming an adult, it didn't stop. Nothing changed. Everything everything felt the same. And honestly, I can say throughout adulthood, I I feel like nothing at all is different from childhood. I feel like maturity is like this this fake concept that's it's not really real. Like cuz I feel like shit is like exactly the same as being a fucking child. Like it's nothing. The only difference is that, oh, now people had their own place and now they're bigger and they have more power. That That's the only real difference that I actually see between adults and children because it's like people still really immature. People still make fun of my voice. Uh, people still had their judgments that, oh, this is a man and this makes you gay and blah, 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 blah. And so, and I remember there's one moment that really particularly, really hit me hard. So, and I understand there's a lot of homophobic people today, but I feel like the older generations, they were much more hateful towards that. So one day, someone calls. And they said that they were one of my closest friends. And they said that they were my boyfriend and that we were gay. So, my mother gets highly upset about this. She goes, tells all these people in the family. And the way that I was treated was, it was horrible. It was, it was completely horrible. Like, I would not wish this on my worst enemy. Like, that is how bad they treated me. And we go through all of this stuff. She goes, gets in contact with my friend's mother. And as us come and we meet, and then the thing that was so crazy to me was that they kept asking me about it. They kept asking, are you gay? And I'm like, no, I'm not gay. And then they're like, they didn't believe me. And they were like, well, why would your friend say this? Because your friend would call us and, you know, they would say this because they felt, you know, they felt, they felt bad about it and felt guilty and blah, blah, blah. And for me, in my head... All right, like, you know, now that I'm older, maybe, maybe someone could feel guilty about it through, like, pressure from society. But in my head, I felt like, but, but if he is gay, then why would he feel guilty about it? I, I, I just, I just felt like that, that's more the thinking of someone who's homophobic, not someone who's gay. Like, so it's like, so how does, like, somebody calling and saying that? How is that proof that I'm gay? Like, that makes no sense to me. So we go through it. We talk to them. 
And then my friend's mother listened to it and he's like, and she's like, this isn't him. Then she asked me, did I hear it? Now my mother, she, she's controlling, okay? Everything has to go her way. No, I did not hear that message because she's always right. She's controlling. She always has to have the power. So I didn't even hear that message. So I was like, no, I didn't hear it. So she let me listen to that message. That person on that message sounded nothing like my friend. Nothing. And of course, people at my school, they, 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 um, they picked on me all the time. But you have to understand, like, how devastating that is to a child to be rejected so much by their family, to be treated like they hate him, he's this disgusting, vile creature. Like, that's a horrible fucking feeling. And, you know, all of this happened simply because of me being, you know, friends with somebody. And that that was just fucking horrible for me. So anyway, I've had nothing but bad experiences. And now, of course, to become good at being social, you have to practice. And of course, if you have a horrible childhood where you associate it with as something bad. And um, I think like something that a lot of people can't understand is that as a child, that's when you're going through your learning stages. As, you're, as an adult, you're, you're not. So everything that you learn as a child, like that becomes embedded within you on a subliminal level. So it's extremely hard to untrain something that you've learned as a child. This is this is the rules of life. This is how life works. Whereas if you learn something as an adult, it's a lot easier to untrain it. So I've learned that, you know, being social is, is, is pain. It's, it's, it's horrible. And so it's it's even more difficult for me to learn how to be better at being social than somebody who didn't have that type of experience. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't understand the difference between those people. And of course, when you deal with people, they expect you to be good at being social. And if you're not good at being social, then you get rejected. So that's that's a whole other thing that, you know, builds on top of that. Now, for me. Like, I've noticed that, um, you know, we've come into this whole era where being too busy is the fad now. So you have to think, like, somebody who struggles with being social comes into this era where the only people that they can be, that like them enough to be social with them are all like, they're too busy. So they don't have time for you, they don't respond to you, they don't talk to you. And of course... When somebody isn't talking to you, that is a form of rejection, which gets into that whole thing where people will be get upset about somebody, um, you know, like hitting them up, maybe texting them too much or whatever like that, which I get to that in like a minute. But so they have these people, the only people that, that, that will talk to them for them to practice, for them to get better are always too busy. So they can't talk to those people. So then who are they talking to? They're talking to the people who reject them. So that means you're getting rejected by both the people who like you and the people who don't like you. You understand what I'm saying? And you are, if you already have this foundation that communication is pain, that makes things worse. And see, and the thing about practicing is that people think of practicing only as you practice to get better. But if you practice something bad, then you get better at being bad. And that's something that people don't take into account, which makes it even harder to become good at something because you've been practicing being bad at it. And, you know, communication got so bad that, like, if I if I had a job and they kept putting me into situations where I had to be social a lot, I wouldn't show up to work. And yes, of course, I would lose jobs because of that. But that—that that is how strong my fear of social situation was. 
there was even a situation where they kept putting me on a register and I just broke down and started crying. There was a situation where they kept putting me on a register and I just curled into a fetal position in the corner. Like, that, that is how horrible just having conversations that's how that's how horrible of an experience it's been for me throughout my entire life and that that of course is why i have a disconnect with people but um since i wanted to address because i guess it'd be a little bit extra for this video but anyway the whole like people hitting you up too much now if you're if you're if somebody is used to constant rejection and um social situations they tend to might hit somebody up like all right when i was growing up right of course you know i grew up in an area where people like people had conversations like where they talk to each other and now texting is popular i personally prefer texting because it's easier but i don't prefer it because of how people use it with the whole too busy fad now you know when we used to talk to each other okay when you have a conversation with somebody face to face the back and forth that we have is way more than than the text that you would consider overboard where somebody texts you too much within like an hour right the back and forth that you have within a, a five minute maybe even ten minute conversation is more than the back and forth that you would have or even one-sidedness in a text message from somebody who's crazy or whatever like that and if somebody is rejected a lot they just they tend to want interaction yes there's some people who are crazy but some people is just they're so used to being rejected like all they've experienced is rejection and people don't understand because like all right rejection it can help you out but it's like if you're constantly being rejected and you have a 100% rejection ratio and you're constantly throwing yourself out there over and over again, it's different between someone who is constantly throwing them outside, out themselves out there. And yeah, mostly they get rejections, but at some point, you know, every once in a blue moon, they get that positive reaction or the people who learn that, oh, you know, the rejection was all in my mind. And, you know, I actually got a lot more positive reaction than I expected. Versus someone who everybody just looks at them like, oh, you're crazy and something's wrong with them. That person is going to get a lot more consistent rejections than the person who just simply expected rejection. But then finds out later that, uh, you know. I mean, things go, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of rejections, but things can work out. And um, those people have a completely different experience. And it's like, you know, and I, I understand, like, you know, people have, you know, not want to be bothered and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, in some situations, you kind of, you kind of have to be like a bit understanding to, you know what that other person is going through because sometimes the other person is not crazy it's just it's just what they're what they're going through in life and what they're dealing with and of course everybody has the right to want to deal with what they want to deal with but i feel like in some situations where people feel like you know something's wrong with you or whatever they go they go a little bit over they go overboard with their their rejection and that other person is not crazy, but now you make them feel like they're crazy and something is wrong with them. And to some degree, that is why something is wrong with them because everybody keeps making them feel like something is wrong with them. So yeah, but I'm gonna get out on this because I'm pretty sure that most most people who who have at least an average level of social skills don't really give a fuck about the viewpoint of the people who have horrible social experiences and, and really they really try they really put themselves out there but they just constantly get those rejections constantly get those oh you're crazy something's wrong with you and it's just like really trying to connect with people but you can't get that connection because people 
want you to already be there where you're this perfect social guru. But it takes practice and you can't get that practice. But the reality was every chick used me. So I got the spitting words like a Uzi. Trapped in my back cave, never coming out.